sorry, wild strawberry. Today we're going to be building out some of the first sections. So, well, actually, the aft sections. So there's the midsection, which is uh, plywood cut out, um, a frame, and then the transom section. Um, and they're going to be. They, I'm going to start framing those. Um, I don't know how much progress it's going to be made, but uh, we'll see. Um, yeah. So I've just started laying out the um, the boards here, and uh, this is going to be. This is not the transom board, but this is sort of one of the mid sections. So this is going to be the widest section of the boat. So this is a four foot wide sheet by two high. And the angle that I was after um, was a two inch, a two inch inset here for the shallow V at the top of the hull. Now there's a problem with that because if I line up where the, I've got these two holes that mark the sort of uh, 38 mil that the, um, sorry, excuse the cat in the background. Hi Heidi. <clears throat> Um, where the so those are the lines where the center where the keel would go. The problem with that is that the boards that I've got will not quite reach. Now this two inches is defined by essentially allowing a, a, a handrail around the edges of the boat, um, and then allowing a vertical drop from there. Um, now the idea is that this is probably going to be the the, the height of or near the height of the seat um, then that can be raised higher that's not a problem but I'm just going to try and work out something in terms of you know, what the optimal angle for this is uh, in terms of the material that I've got and also what's going to allow the most comfortable um, seating position and an optimal amount because I would like some sort of locker storage and some buoyancy underneath because if I want to raise say I've got this angle and this angle here now, the, shall, the, the steeper that angle, the less stable the boat is going to be, I feel. I feel like it's going to tip. Um, the other thing I quite like is to be able to have something here above the bilge, a wooden platform, you know, strips of wood to, 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 to stop your feet getting wet. Now, sitting here, I've heard that the minimum you want in terms of the freeboard there behind the seat is about six inches. Now just sitting down, I felt, just sitting down to test this on a chair, I felt that the best, most optimum distance was about, sorry, this paper's not flat, um, was about eight inches. So, given that we've in this space got 12 to play with, 12 from the center line there. We can probably work out, because that, that eight would give us four to play with at that point. So that's four inches that we've got available to us. But I don't want it to get too high. Now, if you've got a whole foot, it's only about 30 centimetres in terms of room for your legs so that your legs are going to have to be spread out. Now that's not a problem too much because I've got plans for the, um, you know, for the interior of the boat potentially that, 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 that will mean that's not so much of an issue. But if we raise this <coughs> by four inches... That line I think becomes too extreme. Might be difficult to see. But that line. So I would still prefer it to be shallower. So I'm thinking about bringing it down. Now, in terms of the materials that we've got available to us. me we've got from that corner down there all the way up to here now all I need to do is to make them line up essentially at the minimum angle 
So it's essentially the best place for that is what is there. So that only comes in about half an inch. So that's probably fine. So that still allows me to have the, it's a less accurate, you know, it's going to be a, a less, it's not going to be a round number in terms of, or an easy to remember round number in terms of the, um, in terms of um, actually just repositioning this in the area that kind of looks like it's an inch. So maybe we'll actually have to just go in three inches to get the correct angle. And that's simply a constraint of um, the width of that, that, that board. But obviously, you know, it, we could we could sort of we could splice together more boards, but it's just more work and more time and more money. So I'd rather essentially just make a little compromise and increase the angle of that deeper V. Possibly sacrifice a little bit of stability, but maybe actually gain more speed. Who knows? Should be fun. So after a little bit more fettling with the tape measure, I've worked out that the optimal is about three and a quarter inches. So that's what we're going to go with. I'm on the walk. Some of you are probably wondering why I'm doing it like this and not doing it to a plan. Um, I don't really like plans. It's nice to make up, make things up as you go along. But also when you've got the material in front of you, you feel like you're crafting something rather than just following a series of cutting instructions. And that's quite nice. You've sort of you're coming up with solutions on the go, on the job, and you're just a bit more creative that way. And that's one of the reasons I am basically doing it freeform. I hope that's not too frustrating for everyone, but it's fun for me. There we have the shapes that we were after. So the next piece I'm going to tackle is the transom. Now this is a thicker board than the one we used for the center section. Um, I've had this for a while. Again, another project. Um, and we're going to measure this up. And uh, it is narrower than the... Uh, I've got a very good angle on this, but uh, it's narrower than the centre section. Um, so it's going to taper off to the back. And I see no reason why... Everything else shouldn't take it off towards the back, including getting a little bit, including this section getting a little higher um, towards the rear so that it sweeps back. But I think the angle, the angle will then get steeper. So um, just using our um, piece of wood as an example to replicate this to replicate this we've got you know, we're obviously a bit shorter we're probably a bit shorter than we were as well. no, no, we're, we're the same we're the same height but that angle to there obviously wouldn't fit across the whole width of the board um, so what we're gonna have to do is if this comes in it is going to be a steeper angle towards the transom, uh, the stern of the boat. So if you don't know, a trans the transom is the piece that it's literally just the piece that goes at the stern of the boat that, I don't know, you, you, you mount your rudder to or your outboard motor. So I'm actually going to be having an offset electric outboard in that position or that position, depending on which time, time yeah, well, probably in that position because it'll be easier to, to handle. And then rudder here, um, or the fixings for the rudder anyway. So the position of this line, or the angle of the hull at that shape, is probably is going to be deeper towards the rear of the boat. Now it would be possible, it would be possible to sort of maintain that angle, but that would mean that the it would essentially be flatter at the rear of the boat than it would be in the middle of the boat. So it, it would take, it would be, it, the angle of the boat would be going in, it would be curving in like that, straight from the front. And I would rather that it would, it would be more elegant if it 
maintained that curvature, at least maintained that curvature towards the rear of the boat. So I think what I'm going to do is essentially measure that angle and try and replicate it or something like it. Um, and then the deep V will be whatever the resultant angle is. So I'm going to maintain the angle, essentially this angle in this triangle here. So whatever the, that angle is, the angle between there, um, I'm going to maintain that and uh, that angle will change. Now I was just thinking, I'm sure I've got a protractor somewhere and I don't, but what I do have, because I actually cut the material, is the offcut and that retains the angle that I need. So whatever I'm doing on this piece, I can replicate from the offcut from this piece. So I used the angle of the offcut and extended it out and extended the line down here. So hopefully there's the center line. I can put in the points for the, I can put in the points now to echo the shape of this center section. So if I line this up with the top, and I line there, make sure that the angle at the, at the top of the board is correct, I should be able to basically just go daisy line, and there's your line. You can actually see here quite clearly what I was talking about in terms of what would happen if this angle rem remained the same. So it has to go further up. Otherwise, that board is going to get too wide. I don't know how wide it would get. Not dangerously wide in terms of running out of material, thankfully. But we are still talking about getting rid of quite a lot. And I still, I feel like it would look better if this angle here, if this was actually shorter so that the, so that the side would come up slightly. I think it would look fairer, say if that was down to 10 or even just 11 inches, so that it was above that point there, so that towards the rear of the boat it slopes up. So I've got my uh, sort of center line, my vertical center line, set up as it was on the other sheet. Um, now the question is moving it further up. Now it might be that this is only an inch or two. I want it to look, because the higher it is, the fairer it's going to look. I mean, basically the prettier it's going to look, but then the less internal volume I'm going to have. Um, that might not sound like a big deal, but the trouble is that at the, at the stern of the boat, there's a lot going on. So usually you've got uh, lockers. There's going to have to be some space for a battery. Um, I'm thinking that's going to go at the stern. Um, yeah. So I want to leave enough room for certain utilities below the level of the seating, below, below the bench. Um, so it might just be that the line... Obviously, there's going to, that, some of that, those utilities are going to extend to there, but then the angle of the hull... makes a huge difference to the volume below the, the, the benches that you're, that's available. So if you've got the bench set at that height, having the hull there is different to the volume of having the hull set like so is different to having it set like so. Just, to, just about basically providing a little bit more volume. Um, and that probably would aid stability as well. So the lower I keep it, so 
So it's about looks versus uh, stability. And on a boat like this, I think that the stability, especially this size, I think that the stability is going to be a bit, a bit more important. So while it will be higher, maybe an inch and a half, maybe two inches most, um, it's not going to be massively higher. I'm not going to put it all the way up to, say, there, just under the bench, because I think I would lose too much stability at that point. So, made my decision. We're two inches up from the original position, and I think that that should look reasonably okay and doesn't sacrifice too much internal volume or stability. So, it's a new dawn of a new day, and I'm feeling good. Here's a newly completed transom section or a newly cut transom section. The next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to mark out where the next section is going to be. So there are a, a number of sections. Um, here's the transom piece that we've just cut. Um, there was the wider piece and these two sections are going to be framed in pine. Um, the main reason for framing them in, in pine is that this bit here is the one, the section nearer the mast, where then the position of the mast step and then the position of the dagger board is going to be there. So this section of the boat, probably in a triangle here, needs to be quite strong. Now, especially, and then going down, down and sort of bedding into the keel timber at that point. And then this section here, it needs to be framed because essentially it's got to be strong enough to support the seats. So, um, yeah, the weight of human bottoms needs to be supported at that point. So what I'm going to be doing is using this as a reference to basically come in from the widest point and then make a second line there. And not because I'm going to cut anything out of plywood, but because I can use that essentially as a reference point to cut my timbers. So you can see here that these sections are essentially about two foot apart. Um, this section, which is the one, that, the mid section that's already been cut, and this section are sort of in a similar size. The transom piece is going is is to take the back to it, but this is going to be slightly smaller than the wider section. So I need to essentially work out where it's going to be on here. So we've got roughly about nine and a half centimetres at the top there. If it comes in an inch and a half from the top on that line, that will provide this more acute angle towards the stern of the craft. So I've got these pine furniture frames that I'm thinking about taking apart to form the battens. So here I've got the baton set up with the angle that I want to cut in my little homemade vise, and I'm going to cut this baton down to size then I'll use this as a template to cut the button to the other side. Oh, that doesn't work very well when you're trying to film it. Use two hands, kids. Because that created such a weird angle, I'm just going to clean up the end here with a file. So I'm going to test you on this little mount that I've made. tripod adapter and put a little um, it's a mount for well, I'll show you. I'm expecting this to wobble because you're at quite an angle. You haven't fallen off yet. And it looks like you're about to. So here's the little mount adapter that I made um, and it doesn't quite fit in here so I think what I'm going to do is insert some metal washers. So what I've done is jam it in with a little fuse. So you're now up on the roof of the car. The 
next thing I've done is to cut out this little te paper template which is going to serve as the basis of the plywood triangles that I'm going to cut to strengthen these joints. So that'll all be glued up and then another layer of glue and, the, and plywood like this on both sides. basically identical triangles to clean up and hopefully they'll hold it together quite nicely. So here's the completed assembly ready to tidy up and and then glue up with uh, the screws or tacks. I'm not quite sure what's happening yet. So that was a bit of a tense moment. I've um, just started gluing up I've just, uh, I've just finished clamping and gluing the triangle sections. Um, they kind of wanted to move around quite a lot, so that has been a bit of a challenge. But um, it's done. I just need to do that on one more frame. So now I'm mounting some extra battens to the uh, transom piece. Um, just thinking about different ways of doing it. And uh, the main reason for this is that I need to be able to put in some uh, lengthways beams to put the ply against. So they're going to be providing a lot of the, the fore aft um, you know, strength. In, 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 in the vessel. I didn't really want to be adding this extra weight and thickness um, at this point but just thinking about how I was going to attach those, uh, those sort of longitudinal um, beams to, uh, to the transom I, I, I thought this was probably the, the simplest way of doing it without having to actually sort of drill into and compromise that uh, fiberglass or um, sorry the, the um, plywood because even though it's the, the thicker sheet it's actually still only you know probably you know 10 or you know, 9 10 mil um, and I would rather essentially not treat that as a structural timber and basically just have that protected as the as, as, as my uh, transom I've added upright battens and one for the floors and then I've added this piece here which is um, which integrates this carrying handle and will basically be the, the seat base. Now I'm sure you all guessed it but this is actually fused. So I've been using the midsection board as a sort of jig to measure and glue down uh, the I'm going to call it the three-quarter frame section, the penultimate frame section towards the aft. Um, it's actually, it's, it's glued down, so I'm going to essentially have to try and prise this away from uh, the, the midsection uh, board without, uh, without damaging it. So, <laughs> so that's nearly uh, all for today. Um, everything's tidied away. I think tomorrow morning it looks like there's going to be some rain so it might be that I go to the shop and get just one more bit of wood. Just one more, just one more, I promise. Um, I'm sure there'll be other little bits and bobs that I need to get it from time to time. But uh, from Heidi and I, that's uh, time to say goodbye. <laughs>